Jesus Christ, I thank you for the best show. Oh, hi, it's just praying here. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Professor Dr. Sue Smith, along with my husband, Elder, and prof Professor Jerome Smith. And uh, today, this is Word in Business and Professions. In um, Matthew 6.33, it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And I'd also like to introduce my stepson, Fabian Anon, and he is going to be blowing the shofar. And I always like my husband to talk a little bit about the shofar um, prior to uh, him blowing it, so that you have a, a bigger understanding and the significance of it. It's a beautiful thing. Right. The shofar goes back into biblical times, uh, around the time of Moses. They used shofars from ram's horns and from antelopes. Now, the particular one Fabian Anon has is actually from the Kandu antelope, a native to uh, Africa. Now, they blew it during uh, the, whole, the high holy days, you know, uh, Sabbath, um, New Year's, uh, going to battle, for one thing, lift, uh, leaving the camp in the wilderness. And, and um, in the book of uh, Joshua, they marched around Jericho seven times in seven days, and on the seventh day, they marched seven times and blew the shofars loud and hard, and the walls came tumbling down. Now, we like to say things like, you know, may the walls of doubt and unbelief come down in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. So with no further ado, Fabian Anon. That said, let doubt, worry, and fear, the walls of doubt, worry, and fear to crumble down. We are um, in the midst of uh, starting a new show here um, regarding um, keeping the Word of God in business and, and in your professions. And um, I used to have a show called Your Real Estate Update Show, and it was very uh, popular. Um, and at that time, this, that was when... Uh, before HGTV got um, really big. And uh, so I've always wanted to start a new show like this again. And uh, my other show is more in the secular realm. This is going to be based on the Word of God. And because uh, Professor Jerome Smith, my husband, and I are both uh, business people, we want to share the goodness of God here. But I wanted to uh, thank Adam. He's our director and manager of Cross TV. And he keeps us always intact. And he's very good at what he does. So thank you, Adam. And I wanted to bring up, uh, uh, give thanks to Drs. Lorella and Ken Myers. They're the pastors of Mercy Church International in Bellflower. And it's a Bible-based uh, church, and when we go there, we know that God's going to show up every time. <laughs> and um, also, End Time Ministries International Bible University, and the acronym for that is EMIBU. And Dr. Lorella Meyer is president and overseer of the university. And it's a soul winning u university, it's a beautiful thing. Um, Jerome and I are both. Um, professors there. We just do one class because we're busy in our business and taking care of um, everything else that life throws our way. <laughs> and we're blessed. And um, I just wanted to mention something about EMIBU. It is an accredited non-denominational Bible university and it was established in 19, around the 1970s, the early, uh, earlier part of 1970s. And um, it was accredited by the same organization that uh, um, Kenneth Copeland Ministries uh, Bible University um, 
and others as well. Rodney Howard Brown. Rodney Howard Brown and others. And so um, I want to just give them so much thanks for the word of God. I, I followed, um, I've been involved with the word of God for uh, over three decades. And uh, I'm just a follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. When I found out that I um, was, uh, found out about getting born again, there is no stopping me at that time. I just wanted to introduce to you uh, Word in Business and Professions, uh, some of the people that I've talked to uh, that are highly motivated to uh, contribute to this show as well. And um, let me see, we're going to be talking about money management and, uh, oh, okay. Here's one of our future guests, <laughs> and um, that's going to be a celebrity's son that's going to uh, be on our show. And I'm not going to answer it right now because um, your priority right now. And uh, so some of the things that money management with highly respected individuals that will come on the show and show you how money works and how to diversify uh, what money you have. And um, let me see, and how to make your money work for you. Doesn't matter if you have a little bit or a lot of it. Uh, we use money as a tool. And I had to learn that myself because for the longest time, I didn't know how to manage, though I did start buying real estate when I was 25 years old. And because somebody told me to save money. So I saved money and I thought, well, I'm going to do the big girl thing and go buy a house. And um, of course, I'm a realtor. And so we're going to be uh, having some uh, very respected professionals, such as lenders, title professionals, uh, how to get the right price by, you know, having appraisers on the, the program. And... Um, when we do a market evaluation of a property as a realtor, we use the same, uh, pretty much the same steps as an appraiser. And um, we pretty much uh, do the same thing as they do. But they go a little bit further. And uh, we're also going to have, uh, I spoke to one of my celebrity friends, and he's going to be, uh, coming on the show, uh, probably remotely, we'll do Zoom with him. And uh, he's an Academy Award recipient. And, um, and two, uh, I'm going to ask his son if he would like to come on the show as well. And he's starting his own uh, a TV production, TV slash movie productions. And so I'm very, very excited about the things that we're going to be uh, doing. Um, this is California, Los Angeles, and, and so many people want to get into the movie business. And there's just certain steps that they're going to talk about in, in that as well. And they'll talk about themselves and how uh, they've become successful with all of the above that I'm talking about. And um, it's just getting the right focus. and. Um, there's three topics that we're going to talk about, but the, very, the, the main subject is, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And the three things that we're going to be talking about is use integrity in business, uh, the love of money, and um, we know that the love of money is the root of all evil. It's okay to have tons and tons of money, but it's not okay to love it. We seek God first, and all, the, all these things shall be added to you. And always remember, the, number thir the third one is, the Lord thy God gives you wealth. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. I'm having a little issue here. Oh, there we go. And... Um, uh, Jerome, I, do you can, have anything to say? I do have something to say on your first topic uh, on Proverbs 11.1. 1. Can I read that? Sure. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. And we're talking integrity in business. Now, 
I, I, my, my lifelong job was in the meat business, and I, that has a lot to do with weights. Right. And um, I'm telling you something. Um, you have to be honest. All the people that I've seen or interacted with that cheated their customers weight-wise or whatever, th they're gone. They're finished. They're bus they have no more business, and they're forgotten about, you know? Right. And I remember one time when I was an apprentice butcher, and I was in a butcher shop, and um, I took a lot of flack for this, but one time a woman with a young baby came in, and she wanted two pounds of ground round, and I said, okay, and I grabbed a something that I thought was equivalent to two pounds with, and put it on the scale. And I told her, if this is two pounds, I'm giving it to you. And it was exactly two pounds. And so I couldn't back down on my word, so I gave it to her. And my boss was so mad at me, but I said, no problem, I'll pay you. You know, you know I took flack for that, but I had to be honest in how I was dealing with sure. people. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, when you put God first, when I do anyway, I'm always in the right place at the right time, meeting the right people. God opens up mighty doors and signs, miracles, and wonders. Signs, when you put God first, you shall see signs, miracles, and wonders in your life. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. I can't emphasize that enough. And um, in Proverbs 11.3, it says, The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the uh, persever uh, um, perverseness, good, <laughs> little tongue tie uh, there, of uh, transgressors shall destroy them, like uh, Jerome was talking about. You know, you can fool some people some of the time, but you can never fool God. God is our creator, and he watches you. He watches your steps. He's part of you. He made you in, you're part of him. He made you in his image. We are very powerful people. We don't have to cheat. We don't have to lie. We don't have to steal. We seek God first. We keep God in the midst of our heart. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. God has met all of our needs. God wants you to have more than you can ever ask, think, or even imagine according to his riches and glory by way of Christ Jesus. He gave his only begotten son so that we can have eternal life, so that our sins shall be forgiven. All men sin and come short before the glory of God. So don't, you know, walk around thinking you're so high and mighty because you sin too. We ask God for forgiveness. We ask God for forgiveness, and he is graciously gave in his only begotten son so that we can be healed, so that we can, our sins can be forgiven, and that we can have eternal life. Amen? Professor? I, I like Psalm 130.30, for if, if the Lord should mark iniquities, who could stand? We, we've all would fallen. So, you know, he's just waiting for us to turn to him and just say, you know, God, I'm sorry. I have sinned. Please forgive me. It's that simple. Just humble yourself before him. Right. Yeah. Right. And the second uh, part that we're going to get in, uh, well, is uh, the love of money. And uh, in 1 Timothy 6.10, what does it say? It says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. It's okay to have a lot of money, but it's not okay to love it. Um, again, 3 John 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, it says in Matthew 6.33, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I wrote down here, what things? All your needs, wants, and desires are met, are met as long as your life lines up with God. 
It's just a beautiful thing. When you get to that stage, well, God, put God first, put God first. Wake up in the morning, it's a beautiful morning, and hello, God, here I am, and just pray. Give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over. How about that? All of your need will be met more than you can ever ask, think, or even imagine. Praise the Lord. As we were coming here, I was, you were telling me the story about one of your uh, nieces and that how in, when she, ever since she was a little girl, she had wanted to become a police officer. Well, she's not a niece. Or, but oh, but she's a relative, right? Right. Right. And I was thinking, what a beautiful story. Because she did fulfill that desire. But you know what? God put that desire in her heart, and she went with it. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, God is so good. Even right. Like, you know, little, little, little. Years and years ago, mm -hmm. he, was, he, he knew what she was going to do. Right. Yeah. And she wanted to be, uh, and then uh, after that, she became a detective. And Right. We are more than conquerors through him. Can you read that one for us? Where it says more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors through him who loves us. In Romans chapter 8. So if you have okay. your Bibles, right. you're more Here than we welcome to turn to chap uh, Romans chapter 8, starting in 37b. Okay, so here we go. Romans 8, 37. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Neither height, nor death, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our living Lord, our risen Savior. Amen? Amen. May God and, have all the glory. Right. I'm going to cut uh, the, 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 these teachings up a little short right now because uh, I want to get into bringing you back home, and then I want to uh, review some things. And if you're in a profession that's... Um, uh, that's a soaring prof uh, profession. You're welcome to uh, call us. We're going to be getting an 800 number for this show uh, soon enough. But um, always remember that God gives you the wealth. In Deuteronomy 8.18 it says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he, God, that giveth the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto the fathers as it is this day. Remember, God, and I keep saying, it's not this pie in the sky saying, named G-O-D, God. It's our creator, the creators of the heavens and the earth, the fowls of the air, the fish, creator of all of this. And the ninth thing that he created was man. He breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, that electrifying breath of life that we have here. We are blessed people. All God said is, put him first. Obey his word. He'll give you peace. He'll give you prosperity. He'll give you good health. He'll give you your heart's desires as long as it lines up with God's word. It's very simple, and it's a beautiful thing when you get to know God, and then you walk in that integrity and accuracy of his word. It's beautiful. What is your heart's desire? Is it time to repent? In Acts 2.38, it says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent! and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Excuse me. Remission for the remission of, of sins. Yeah. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
Can you read Ephesians chapter 2, verses 7 through 8? I would love to, Professor Susan. Ephesians 2, 7. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Everything is from God. Hallelujah. Right, and we're not saved by works, but by believing and receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and as our Savior. Once you do this, there's a guarantee of eternal life. But what you do with it, as you stand and walk in that glorious liberty of the freedom that God has given us through his Son, and we walk in love, that brilliance of God's light of his love, that powerful light of his love, that's when you're going to see signs, miracles, and wonders, and phenomenons happen in your life. And if you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or even refresh the Spirit of the Lord, please repeat after me. But first, can you uh, go over Romans 10, 9, and 10, and 17? Romans 10, 9, and 10. Thank that you. if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then faith comes by hearing, and by hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 17. Hallelujah. Beautiful promises in the word of God. So if you'd like to receive Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or if you'd like to refresh it in your heart, just uh, get peaceful right now just for a few moments, and then repeat the words that I say to you. Just bow your head and just get into the moment right now. And say, Dear God, Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. And I ask for your forgiveness. And I ask for your forgiveness. I believe Christ Jesus is your son. I believe Christ Jesus is your son. I believe that he died for my sin. I believe that he died for my sins. And that you raised him from the dead to life. Dead to life. I ask him, Christ Jesus. I ask him, Christ Jesus. Into my heart. Into my heart. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. And to follow him as Lord. And to follow him as Lord. From this day forward. From this day forward. Guide my life, O Lord. Guide my life, O Lord. And help me to do your will. Help me to do your will. I pray this in the name. I pray this in the name. That is above all names. That is above all names. Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. My Lord. My Lord. And returning Savior. And returning Savior. Amen. Amen. If you prayed this prayer. I believe that you have been born again of God's Holy Spirit. You have God and Christ in you, and you have the hope of glory. And you are destined for eternal life. As you stand on the integrity and accuracy of God's word, you won't only be blessed here on earth, where you have um, at its best uh, perhaps 120 years, but you're going to have eternal rewards. It's a beautiful thing. God's promises are great and mighty and beautiful. And I pray for each and every one of you right now. Do you have a prayer for, uh, that I, right. I, I, I feel that God is telling you something right now? Right. He's just saying nothing, nothing can separate you from God's love. Nothing. Not Amen. yourself. Amen. We are victorious in everything that we do. More than as conquerors. Long, and we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. Yeah. Neither height nor death nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ, God, which is in Christ Jesus, our living Lord and returning Savior. And um, I just wanted to... Um, remind you of a few things that we're going to be going over. We're going to be talking about money management uh, with highly respected professionals in the industry, um, how money works, and, and how it, uh, you can make it work for you. 
I wish I would have known this a long time ago because I lost a lot of money trying to make money, and now I'm putting all of it together. It's just mathematical uh, geniuses that I work with and uh, learning how to diversify your money. It's a beautiful thing. And uh, learn more about real estate. Real estate is a good place to put your money. Um, but there is, um, you don't want to buy it at the top of the market necessarily, uh, unless it's the right in, uh, investment and uh, at that particular time. I have a friend that uh, bought a house in Arizona. She just moved in it because it, she was, um, she bought it and it wasn't even built yet. It, just the frame was up. And she just moved into it this month. And as she moved into it, she had already made $40,000 in equity. That was a beautiful thing, too. I was so happy for her. So happy. And, uh, you know, again, I have uh, a good friend of mine. He's an, an Academy Award recipient. And he has a lifelong um, experience in the uh, TV and movies. He's going to be joining us as well. And unless he's in town at that time, uh, we're going to be doing a Zoom with him. So, um, and then uh, I'm going to talk to his son about uh, joining us as well. And he's starting his own TV production. So. I just wanted to tell you, thank you so much for joining us. Please tell your friends to join us because we have great and mighty things to share with you. And in 2 Thessalonians 3.16, it says, Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you all. Amen. Amen. And God bless you more than abundantly, more than you can ever ask think or even imagine according to his riches and glory by way of Christ Jesus. Any last comments? I do have something to say real fast. It's just that sometimes people doubt their salvation. But I remember a long time years ago when John Wimber, the founder of the Vineyard Movement, was on the radio program. This is years ago. And somebody asked him, uh, can we lose your salvation? And he just simply said, not if you're in Christ. So we're well, in Christ. Amen. Amen. God in, God in Christ in you, the hope of glory. We love you, and God loves you too.